Hello and welcome to the channel, my name is Annalisa and today I'm going to be showing you some more Inktober drawings. Pardon me if I seem a bit distressed during this voiceover. I'm <laughs> I would like to be eating dinner right now, but I was making tacos and I was using some hamburger that I browned yesterday, but I forgot that I used up all the shredded cheese yesterday making enchiladas. And so the only shredded cheese that we have right now is frozen. And I can't defrost it in the microwave because I hate <laughs> the taste of melted cheese. I know that's really weird because most people really like the taste of melted cheese. But it changes the taste and I like unmelted cheese but I don't like melted cheese. So I have to wait for it to frost the normal way. And I'm hungry. <laughs> so while I'm waiting I decided to do something useful and get this voiceover done. <laughs> But anyway, what I'm supposed to be talking about is this first drawing was for the prompt Frail, which might seem kind of weird because it's, it's a dragon, and there's a prompt <laughs> that is just dragon, so shouldn't I save my dragon drawing for that? But no, I'm going to do more than one dragon drawing. <laughs> So I decided to do a little baby dragon in a shell for this prompt because shells, eggshells, are frail and so are little babies. They're very fragile and need to be taken care of. So I decided to draw a little dragon who has just booped its little snoot out of its egg and has poked one little wing <laughs> out the other side and is breathing its first little smoke out of its little nostrils. And I wanted to do a dragon piece and I also kind of wanted to do a slightly chippy style dragon piece because dragons are just freaking cute if you decide to draw them that way. So I thought I would really enjoy that. Plus it can be easier than drawing a grand adult dragon. And of course it had to fit the prompt. So I really enjoyed making this piece. The shell is the part that the most design and uh, effort went into and it is supposed to be kind of based off some designs for dragon shells I've seen that are sort of magma rock inspired and so it's supposed to look like quite 3D like all those red parts are lumps that are sticking out of the yellowy orange uh, base and so it's supposed to look very textured so <laughs> hopefully it does. I really thought it turned out well. I didn't have high expectations for my skill because I've never drawn anything like this before, but it turned out really well for what I thought, so I hope you'll like it. Then we have my Wonder Woman piece, or my Diana on a Swing piece, and this is of course for the prompt swing. The easy thing about that prompt is that you can just draw a swing and have anyone or anything you want swinging on it. So this was the easiest prompt to meld with uh, Greatly Geeky's uh, themes of the week because this week's theme was uh, comics, comic book characters. And so of course Wonder Woman is a comic book or was a comic book. I'm not sure if there's currently a comic book version going on but anyway I fell in love with her when her movie came out a few years ago I can't even remember what it was now but I have a big old <laughs> um, poster thing of her that I put up on my wall I just really loved the way the movie was done and how so many women were rep represented and the way their armor was designed was just so awesome. So I decided to do a piece of her in her Themyscira outfit, which is the name of the island that her Amazon people live on, so it's what she wears while she's on the island. I really like her uh, proper Wonder Woman costume as well, but this one was just uh, sort of special and a bit different and I like to do things that are a bit different. Something else I experimented with in this piece was <laughs> trying to figure out how to use uh, my very limited palette of alcohol markers to make a light brown 
corset armor stuff and all of her armor because her armor is light brown and is not yellow or dark brown, which were my options. So you could see me at the beginning there sort of putting the tips together and that actually worked really well. <laughs> I wasn't sure whether I was going to destroy my markers, but it came out really quickly and didn't uh, leave any residue after the other ink had gotten sort of rinsed out of the marker through use and so that worked out a lot better than I expected it to. Not perfect, but uh, better than I would expect to get with such a limited range of markers. I really need to get some skin tones. <laughs> Speaking of which, her skin was actually done not in inks, I did that with watercolors. Very slight, that's why she's so pale. I did it very lightly uh, and only one layer because this is not watercolor paper and it was gonna wrinkle something fierce. So I just put down some very light watercolors there to get her a little bit of pigment without having to use the same methods I did for her uh, armor because while that looks kind of okay on marker, it would not have looked good as a skin tone. <laughs> Then we have the prompt pattern, which I didn't actually film myself doing because I forgot. I just got into what I was doing and forgot to turn the camera on. So in exchange for not getting to see me draw that one, I, did just, uh, I decided to show myself sketching the next one, which is snow, which I did a snow fairy for. Uh, the, by the way, if you're wondering what that thing over there next to her is, that is my drawing for pattern. And it is a picture of a wand and some arrows indicating patterns for spells. I only know two spells, uh, the patterns for them, and that is Wingardium Leviosa and uh, Avada Kedavra. So those are my attempts at arrow lines <laughs> indicating how to cast those. I don't think they're perfect, but uh, it's my best try. Then for the Snow Fairy, I went for a very simplified uh, look. I was thinking of doing a bigger piece for this, like my Wonder Woman and uh, little dragon egg pieces, but I just didn't have the time. And the same thing happened with this piece, <laughs> which was uh, for the prompt dragon, obviously. And this is as far as I got on my semi-realistic sketch, and uh, it was looking pretty terrible. Of course, that's how all my sketches for semi-realism look before I've, when I've only partially done them. But I just didn't have the time, once again, to finish a full semi-realistic sketch for a dragon. So I decided to freehand, which was stupid, but I decided to freehand a, a minimalist design for an asexual flag dragon because I've done asexual flag dragons before. So I thought it'd be easy to remember that and just do it again. No, no, the shape was kind of terrible, but the colors were good. Uh, so I like that, but Definitely, there's a reason I usually sketch things first and use references, but oh well, at least uh, you can kind of get the idea of where I was going with it. Then we have, for the prompt, Ash. I was, of course, thinking of mythical creatures because of the dragons, so I decided to do a phoenix. I adore phoenixes. I'm not sure which language that word comes from, so I don't know how to pluralize it, but um, I love the one in Harry Potter. I love the ones in Narnia. I love any and all phoenixes and firebirds. I've loved them since uh, I was a little girl and in ballet class, our teacher read us a story, read us the ballet, the storyized version of the ballet, the firebird. And I love that story and the magic feather and the gorgeous illustrations that were in a particular, in the particular version she read to us. So ever since then, I've been totally into Firebirds. <laughs> so of course, at any opportunity, I'm gonna draw a phoenix. 
And so I decided to go for my alcohol markers again with this one because I wanted it to be very colorful and have some vibrant reds and oranges and also to have some blacks and grays to represent the ashes that this phoenix is coming out of. And then I also got out my uh, gold pen again to do little uh, highlights and outlines because I freaking love my gold and silver paint pens. Oh, and then I did little golden sparkles falling down <laughs> from his transformation as he comes out. Then we have the prompt overgrown. Oh! <laughs> What you just saw there was my stupid cat, uh, Pippin, getting in front of the camera. He decided he needed to join me. Usually they stay on my lap when they come and join me for my drawing, but he decided to get all up in my business. So that was that. <laughs> anyway, back to me drawing this castle. Uh, my idea was to draw an overgrown castle with loads of plants all over it, kind of based on the uh, Sleeping Beauty idea where they've got rose bushes grown all over so you can't get in. But this time they're more friendly type overgrown plants. I really enjoyed doing this one and felt really good about the results. Uh, it seems that when I do simple but detailed uh, black and white ink drawings or just uh, mainly micron pen ink drawings, I usually like the results a lot, <laughs> so that might be something I get into more in the future because I haven't really done a lot of it in the past, so I'm glad that I'm using a tour as a chance to try that out. It's working out so well. So I decided to do the outline after the plants because since it's overgrown, the plants are going to be partially obscuring some of the outline. And then I wasn't sure if I wanted to leave it black and white or add colors, but since I already had recorded uh, my doing it in, in just black and white, I wasn't going to lose the black and white just because I went over it with pens. So I decided to do it anyway and uh, did some greens and some oranges to have nice colored leaves. And I think it actually does look really good with the colors. It helps kind of differentiate so that it doesn't look like just a mess of scribbles. It looks more like actual leaves. Then, because I'm late, I decided to do uh, day 15's prompt as well as day 14. And so I did the prompt for Legend. And uh, I really wasn't sure what to do for this. I was thinking of a sword, maybe someone with a sword raised and they were like a legend because they were a great fighter or something. But then I saw Sandrine's gallery, who I'll link below. She did a painting of someone cosplaying as Link from The Legend of Zelda. So of course after she did that, I got started thinking of Legend of Zelda, and I, which I absolutely adore. And so I decided to draw the Master Sword from my favorite or at least one of my favorites. Breath of the Wild is right up there now because it's freaking amazing. But my most nostalgic Zelda game, which was Twilight Princess. So that is the version of the Master Sword that I tried to capture here. So those are my pieces. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.